Mr. Williams is a nutritionist, among other things, and he'll talk to us today about healthy lifestyle issues. Good morning, Mr. Williams. Good morning. Good morning. I'm going to let you introduce yourself properly to the viewers. Okay, well, my name is Jason Williams, as you, as you said. Um, I, uh, I'm, I'm, I've got qualifications in nutrition and other things. I deal with uh, exercise program, lifestyle changes, um, the use of herbs, the safe use of herbs, um, and just basically lifestyle uh, coaching, telling you how you can become best in health and well-being generally. Um, and that cover a broad spectrum of things. Um, you know, a lot of times when, when people hear health, the first thing that comes to mind is, is a, a white coat, um, a dark image. And health kind of starts before that. You know, health is, is when you're actually happy, well, and achieving what you're set out to do. Um, uh, when pe folks uh, think of sickness, they always think of, well, in the hospital bed, not to do. A sickness start long before that too. Yeah. Um, and a lot of times that is where people get mis um, guided and misled. Because, for example, none of us ever get sick out of the blue. Sickness diseases takes time to come. There's certain things like the flu or the cold, yes, that can come on sudden. But that is also an indication that your immune system have been challenged for a while, and it doesn't take one day. Um, there's some virus and some uh, different bacteria that is stronger than some. We understand that. But even then, it is all down to how the immune system is working. That's why sometimes you will get a flu, we're working together, and I just won't pick it up because my immune system is different from yours and it's working. You get what I mean? Yes. And so health um, and sickness start long before we get to the doctor and before we get to the sick bed. Um, we, or myself, we try to tell you when you're getting sick before you reach to the bed and okay. before you meet the doctor. Um, and that, that, that is simple. At the same time, it's, it takes discipline, it takes a lot of commitment to achieve. Um, diet is where we normally start from. We understand that genetics have a lot to play with, with what disease you are going to develop or what you're predisposed to. But we look at genetics as uh, a gun that is loaded, but the lifestyle, the diet, and what you do will pull the trigger. So mm -hmm. it is your responsibility as a person, if you know that your mother, your grandmother, your grandfather suffer with hypertension or diabetes, it is your responsibility to ascertain why are they getting these diseases and try your best to, counter to counteract. Look at how they eat, look at how they live their lives, look at every aspect that could actually affect health and say, you know what, I realize that my mom, she never slept well. She's mm -hmm. always up every time. I never remember my mom sleeping. Then you probably want to say, hey, that's probably a problem that started as a result. It can be a contributing factor. Also, always busy. I've never seen my mom and sit down and relax. You, you know what I mean, because yeah. um, they're always busy. Look at that. Maybe you need to start relaxing. Never seen their parents exercise. Always seen them, well, eating a big meal at the end of the day. Think about it. All these things can be contributing factors. Um, and so what I use, or what we use, is a, is a system, what we call the eight laws of health. The eight laws of health pretty much cover them all. Um, it's, it's really New START. I have two acronyms. I have New START, and I have one that you call End the Pain. New START stands for nutrition, uh, exercise, water, uh, S for sunlight, T for temperance, a for air, R for rest, and T for trusting God. We go through all of those aspects when somebody says, well, you know, I'm not feeling my best. Or somebody says, well, you know, I've been to the doctor. They said I'm diabetic and, you know, I don't know what to do of my diet. Well, I look at their nutrition. Mm -hmm. I look at their exercise. I look at their water. Because all these things will have a contribution to the fact that you are diabetic. Um, 
once we, 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 we ascertain where you're lacking in nutrients or what bad habits you have in regards to how you get your nutrients, then we try to correct it. And just to give you an example what I mean, if somebody is eating healthy foods um, and your body is not getting the nutrients from it, almost if you're not eating it. Yes. Okay. One of the things that, that can cause or can contribute to that is something as simple as eating and drinking at the same time. If you eat and drink, what you do, you actually dilute your digestive enzymes. And what that means, even though you're eating healthy food, your body cannot properly break that food down. And if your body cannot break it down properly, as it moves to your small intestines, where your body is supposed to absorb the nutrients from the food, it is diluted. And so your body will not get the nutrients from it. What that essentially means is that, um, I remember an artist, you remember Bob Marley? He sang a song that says, your belly full, but you're hungry. And that's exactly what it means. Your, your, your tummy is full, you feel satisfied, but guess what? The you nutri any of the you ain't got the nutrients. And so you feel satisfied, but your organs, your blood that needs the nutrients to do its job, is not getting it. And that's something as simple, eating and drinking. Now, if you look at how sickness and disease is reigning through Grenada and worldwide, how much of us eat without drinking? Not many of us. Not many it's of us. It's our culture. You it, buy your exactly. food, you buy a drink. <laughs> that's right. We always eat and drink. And something as simple as that can have a dramatic effect on something like diabetes. You get where I'm coming from? Because now if you think about it, you're eating a healthy meal and then you're washing it down with either water or a sweet drink. So you're putting your, your predisposed. So something as simple as that could actually, if you remove that practice from or habit from your diet, could actually slow down you getting to a predisposition that you have genetically in terms of sickness. Something as simple as that. So what is the proper method? You eat your food and then you have your drink after, or you drink first and then eat? All right. You can do both, okay. but it's all about timing. Okay. For example, if you're going to drink before you eat, you need to do it at least 15 to 20 minutes before. Preferably not too cold, like we like to drink ice drink or with ice in it, not too cold, because what that does, it interferes with your digestion. You see, your body will only digest that fluid or utilize it at optimum at a certain temperature, which is room temperature, body temperature. If it's too cold, your body it arrests digestion and brings it to the appropriate temperature before it uses it. Mm. That takes time. Now, can you imagine eating something like oil down and then drinking a cold drink? The oil solidify. E exactly. You got it. But Spot we don't on. think about that. You don't. But that is exactly what happens. Just as you said, if you put a little bit of uh, change the temperature of oil, in no time it turns white, it's solidified. Mm -hmm. The same thing happens. You're mixing them up here, and you're thinking, well, uh, your, your stomach doesn't have a mind. Your brain is where your mind is. You have to think before you eat. So the same a, thing a lot of the illnesses that we have are really just because of bad habit. Yeah, uh, I think um, about 90% of the illnesses that we suffer from is lifestyle and diet related. Um, as I said before, yes, genetic does have a part to play with it, but our lifestyle and our diet can bring that disease on. It can pull the trigger. It can actually bring us to the grave or to the sick bed really quick. And so all of these things are so crucial. And that's what we do. I teach people, don't eat and drink at the same time. If you're gonna, drink 10 minutes or 15 minutes before. And don't make it too cold either. Um, don't make it too sweet either that kind of thing. Uh, if you're going to do it after you eat, now because you got food in your stomach and your body's getting at work, you don't want to put drink there too quick either. You want it to go through the first stage of digestion. So you want to eat a drink about two hours later. Okay? okay? Not just, well, I've eaten now and so I'm going to drink. No. Leave about an hour and a half to two hours, then you drink. That will Give allow the body the time to digest. Right, digestive fluids would work on the food, break it down properly, so when it goes through, it can pick up the appropriate nutrients to be digested. That is a simple practice that floors a lot of folks. Okay, um, that full feeling that they get, that's not full. That's the body's way of arresting digestion and just making you feel that you're full because your body cannot digest food in that environment.
Okay. okay. Exercise is the next one that we, we, we deal with a lot. Some folks might exercise one. And though that is good, that doesn't really enhance your health so much. It's better to do small amount of exercise consistently. Try to exercise uh, about four times a week. You know, every day is not necessary okay. um, because sometimes you can overdo it. Okay. Okay. Four um, times a week uh, for for what extent? For about Short 30 minutes periods, a day. 30 minutes. And if some folks, you know, some folks, they, they have problems with their joints and their back and they can't. Exercise doesn't always mean going to the gym on the track. Being active, just taking a, a small room, walk. A, yep, and a small walk or even if you're home and you can't. Just taking a broom and, and sweeping your home and making sure you tidy the walls. and Just being active is actually exercise. A lot of folks, if you think about it, they spend most of the time sitting down doing nothing, especially in this upcoming era that we're living in. The appropriate thing is to get a nice job. What's a nice job? Sitting down behind an office desk and getting paid a lot. Um, I always hear that. I says, yeah, you're making that a lot of money, um, but that money is just going to look after you later in life. You know, you, you actually, you deserve to make it because you're going to need to pay out on your health bill anyway because you're not active. You know, our body's made to move. And when you sit down, I mean, I remember reading something, and I don't remember by who, but it says that folks who sit down like about eight hours a day or about seven and a half hours a day doing sedentary computer work, desk work, it says if you do that for five years, it takes away about 10 years of your life. Okay, and if you do live that tenure, it won't be quality life. It will be very poor quality life with sickness, disease, pain, aches and pains here and there. And so all these things is, is crucial for our good health. I've actually seen physical evidence of that. I have a friend, I'm not going to say his name because mm -hmm. I don't want to embarrass him. But right. he works a job where he literally sits at a computer every day working and he's a young man. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's about 27. And shingles, which is a disease that was known for old people, right. he shingles at when he was about 26 or 25. Wow. Yeah, so mm -hmm. young people getting diseases that were, well, previously known as, as old, old people's people disease. diseases because mm -hmm. it's true with the, especially now with the internet and technology, we have everything right there, right there. while sitting down. There's no real need to get up to get any information. You know, we're, our bodies are starting to think that we're old when we're not. Yeah. We're, we're literally dying before time, literally. Um, you know, one thing I always say to folks, if you do have to sit down and work behind a desk, I'm not telling you you mustn't work, but try your best. Go and get some exercise throughout the day. Walk around your office. Get up for lunchtime, and rather than just going to sit down and eat lunch, have your lunch. Have a very simple lunch. Because you're not doing a farmer's work anyway, you don't need to eat a big meal because you're just doing, you know. Go for a walk. Grenada is, the weather here is pretty good at most. When it's raining, it's, it's reasonable. Go for a walk. That is enough to keep the blood moving. The, the, the life force of the body is the blood. It moves around the body. And when you sit down for a period of time, it stagnates, you know. And plus, we wear tight belts around our waist. All of this interfere with your blood flow. Yes, okay. your majority of blood move, but you have minor little arteries that is interfered with, and that can cause a problem over 10 years. Um, recently, I heard that, you know, they used to say screening for something like prostate cancer and breast cancer after 40. Now, people are coming down with prostate cancers within their 30s and even in their 20s. Breast cancer, the same thing. Now, as you rightfully said, old folks' disease is now afflicting the young. And pretty much what it is is that young people are living old folks' lifestyle. They're not moving no more. They're they refined, I mean, restricted. And so these are serious effects on health. And if people can just make simple changes like that, not eating and drinking, exercising regular, and drinking appropriate water, mm -hmm. this would do marvelous uh, to their health in terms of longevity and also in terms of their general well-being, how they feel. These things are crucial. Mm -hmm. okay. So we've discussed the need for exercise and the need to have a, the need to have a, a balanced diet. Mm -hmm. Are there any other aspects that we need to focus on so that we can live a healthy lifestyle? I mean, as I said, it's eight laws. I pretty much just told you about nutrition, exercise, water on a brief level. Obviously, they go much deeper. Um, 
after water we normally recommend sunlight now sunlight is something that we in Grenada don't lack true That's but in true. fact the vitamin that and the nutrients that we do get for the sunlight, a lot of folks in Grenada don't like it. For example, I'm not putting you on the spot, but how much time do you spend in the sun every day? Not very much. It's very hot and it's uncomfortable. 